Hey, how's it going? My name is Pat, and this is the Not Really Floating Lamp Build. This past semester, I took a furniture class, and it was a great opportunity for me to try and make something for my desk. And of all things, I chose a lamp. I don't know why, but I ended up actually really liking it, and this is the final result. I'm going to show you how you can make a simpler version that's just as cool, and all you're going to need power tool-wise is a table saw, or a circular saw, and a jigsaw. That's it. As far as what you need, it's pretty basic. You'll just need a variety of sandpapers, some wood glue, spray mount, linseed oil, square and ruler, maybe a measuring tape, and some clamps. For material, you'll need some half-inch hardwood of your choice, and we're also going to use either melamine or MDF, and the thickness doesn't really matter. You'll just have to adjust some of the dimensions of the parts as we start cutting. I'm using MDF as a cheaper alternative to melamine, but because of that, it's going to require an extra step later on. And that's basically it. These are the five parts that you'll need to make the concrete mold. Quick reminder that you can make all these parts out of melamine instead and you'll save some time in the end. I don't have any 90 degree clamps, so all I did was I took a piece of MDF and clamped it to the fence on my table saw and made sure everything was square. From there, I applied glue to the horizontal pieces of wood while applying downward pressure on the vertical ones and clamping it to the fence. Now we're going to draw center lines on our base plate as well as the four other parts we cut. You want to make sure that you're referencing from the outer edges. And this is basically it. It's going to allow us to keep our box squared and lined up when we go to pour concrete. Alright, so this is without a doubt the hardest part of the entire project, at least for me, was trying to find a plastic bottle that was taller than 3 and 5 eighths and had a diameter that was larger than 1 and a half. This bottle will get destroyed, so find something that you don't care about. Once you find a bottle or a tube or whatever that will work for the job, go ahead and measure the diameter and put little tick marks on the base so you know exactly where to line it up. And when you're happy with that, go ahead and grab a glue gun and glue that thing down to the base plate. I'm cutting a part out of half inch material and this is going to be used to create a pocket in the concrete mold for the lampshade. Down below you find a link where you can download the template for this part and you can pick whichever one you want. There's a squared off one or a rounded off one that will require some sanding. And once you're ready, go ahead and mount it with some spray adhesive and glue it onto the part. Put some wood glue on the back of that part and pick any side you want and line it up with those reference lines we drew. I jumped the gun here a little too early and I started applying the petroleum jelly which is basically going to allow the wood to separate from the concrete. But this is also that extra step I was talking about in the beginning if you do choose to use MDF over melamine. What I'm doing here is I'm basically lining up the sides with those reference lines so I know exactly where this part I'm about to cut is going to end. It's about 2 inches and this is going to create a pocket in the concrete for the power cord to escape out the back. Make sure you gunk on that hot glue so there's no draft angles and the concrete won't get stuck. Alright, so this Frankenstein of a contraption is our mold for the concrete. You want to clamp your two L-shaped sides together and use the two C-clamps to mount it to the base. Double, even triple check and make sure that the side for the piece for the lampshade pocket is on the same exact side as the pocket for the power cord. My friends recommended I use the vinyl base quickcrete, so that's what I'm using here. And what you can do is tap the sides and this will basically bring all the air bubbles to the top. So while our concrete mold is drying up, we can go ahead and get started on the lampshade and these are the four parts you're going to need to make. Now grab that jigsaw and cut out that template as best you can, but if you do screw up, it's all good. You can always fix it with some sanding in the end. So to glue up the lampshade parts, I'm doing the same technique I did earlier. I'm just going to work my way around until all four are glued up. Here's our mold the next morning, and the sides popped off no problem thanks to the petroleum jelly, but I probably removed them a little too soon as some of the concrete came off with the mold, as you can see here. This is basically the home stretch. All that's left is to finish off the lampshade, and as far as the concrete block, I'm going to go ahead and bring everything down to the same height now. If you recall in the beginning, those sides that we cut were 3 and 5 eighths. The actual final height is supposed to be 3 and a half, and I did that so that we had a little bit of room for error just in case the concrete didn't cure level. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of scrap wood down to 3 and a half inches. I taped a felt tip marker on top. Janky I know, but it's going to work, and we're just going to run it along the perimeter. And this is going to give us a really nice reference line so we know exactly where to sand down to. You've got a couple of options when it comes to sanding down the concrete. You can use a palm sander, you can use a sanding block with like a really heavy grit, or you can use a belt sander. Uh, I've been burning my ass out here all day, probably like 10 shades darker, so I'm going to pick up the pace and use a belt sander. Now hopefully the bottle you used to create the pocket in the concrete wasn't too big and it's not like throwing a sausage down the hallway, but if you did, no big deal, you just grab some electrical tape and wrap it around the socket until you get a nice snug fit. This is a Bluetooth light bulb I bought off Amazon. It can make like a bajillion colors. I'll put a link down below, but this is what really brings the lamp to life. I went ahead and masked off the light as well as the bottom and painted the body like a satin black because I wanted to create more contrast between the light and the concrete block. So I use Gorilla Glue. I would probably use like a five minute epoxy. It's holding up for now, but just grab a clamp and glue it front to back and make sure everything is lined up and square. For me, this is the cherry on top for any wood related project is applying linseed oil at the end. It's going to bring out that grain. It's going to bring the whole wood to life. I can't breathe right now.
If you made it this far, I just want to say thanks for watching. I know that was a long video and I'm pretty sure I've missed stuff along the way too. So if you have any questions or need help with a step, let me know in the comments down below and I'll help you. Also, I am giving this thing away. I don't need to, so if you want it, leave me a comment down below and I'll figure something out and I'll send it out your way. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit that like button and also subscribe to my channel if you want more DIY projects like this every week. See you next time.